Good morning, church. Good morning. And welcome to worship on this glorious autumn morning. So lovely to have you here on the feast day of St. Patrick. So happy St. Patty's Day to those who, particularly those who have got Irish heritage. And um, what a glorious green day it is for those who are celebrating. Thanks, Penny, for the point putting that uh, first slide up. Thanks. We're going up to Jerusalem this morning. Jesus returns to Jerusalem for the celebration of the Passover festival. And in the going up, the people often sang the Psalms, the Psalms of Ascent. They were songs of invitation to come. Let's worship God together. And this morning I want to invite you to share with me in the call to worship that we would invite each other to come as we gather in. Come, young and old. Come, energetic and weary. Come, teachers and students. Come, teachers and creators. Come, clean and dirty. Come, extroverts and introverts. Come, let's worship together and learn together. And let's reflect on God's goodness and guidance in our lives. Please stand with me as we're able. Let us sing together, Ancient of Days. Thank you. 
as we continue to sing, be still for the presence of the Lord. Holy Spirit of God, you are like a fire that burns the dross away, the chaff and the straw, leaving only the purified things. 
purify our hearts, Lord God, we pray. May your light shine into the dark spaces of our lives. God, grant to us the courage to lay before you those patterns of behaviour and thought that are destructive to ourselves and others, that we may walk in newness of life in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, I am confident to declare to you that because of all that God has accomplished in the life, the death and the rising to new life of Jesus, I can declare to you, your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God indeed. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And I invite you to share that greeting with one another this morning. Easter. What do you think might happen 
as these seeds sit in the water. We won't quite get to the flower stage, but they will start to grow. Peter's got a special picture he's going to show us up here. The seed begins to germinate. It sprouts, that's right. And first of all, it puts a little root down, and then some more little roots, and then a shoot. And then you can see the green shoots poking up through the soil. And hopefully, on Easter Sunday when we come, and I know that you'll be around four days, but when you come back, I'll keep some for you. We'll see these wheat seeds shooting up new life. And that'll be the special message on Easter Sunday. Well, I'm going to plant these ones. Some cotton wool right down at the bottom of the cup. And then saturate it with water. And give it a little poke down. And then we we'll drop the seeds in. One, two, three. Now, when a farmer goes out to sow his seed, he needs to be mindful of how old the seed is. Because if the seed is more than one season old, then there might not be as many seeds germinate because the older the seed gets, the less viable it is. And so we're planting three seeds in each cup to make sure we at least get one. Now this morning when we go out to Eleanor and Barb, you're going to be doing, making some of these for yourself to take home and watch them grow. That'll be a special moment. Let's share together in a prayer. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you that you died on the cross for us and rose to new life on Easter Sunday. Just like the seed giving up its life and existence as a seed to become something brand new, full of life. God, we pray that you would help us to grow in our understanding of this mystery. Help us to understand your love. We pray for your blessing on our beautiful children as they go to their special time now. Your blessing upon their teachers too, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Well, if you'd like to go with Eleanor and Barb out to Children's Church, and we'll see you at morning tea time. He's come a long way to be with us this morning. All the way from the depths of the southern part of the continent, just to bring you announcements. Do you want to welcome home? Great to see you here. And it's great to have you back home. I've come all the way from Division 11. <laughs> and we have a new person representing us. I draw your attention to the, the new sheet for today, the weekly scroll. And uh, in doing so, I want to welcome back Rob and Carol. I think Carol hasn't been well, so it's good, good to see you both here today. I can say that because I haven't been here either, but I'll be worded up that you haven't been here, so thank you. It's also a great pleasure of mine to welcome Adam Gregory, the manager of the op shop. And I know that people in the op shop have already have met Adam. I know when I heard that he was appointed, I was actually in Melbourne at the time and uh, with my family, but Adam goes to the same church that my Queensland family goes to, so I know Adam quite well. And it's just great to have you uh, as part of the, the team here and in the op shop. And I, I know we all pray that it'll be a great, uh, a great uh, time for you and for the, the work of the op shop. So welcome today. If you haven't met Adam, he's up there and he'll be here at morning tea, so say hello. Uh, craft Fair. Uh, craft Fair is coming up and Barb is actually gone out, yes. And uh, Barb's asked me to announce that there's a little gold box up the back for, for donations towards uh, ingredients for uh, cooking and so on. There's also uh, the requirement for jars, I understand. And she said something about plants, but I'm not quite sure what she said about plants. I don't think this is a plant. I think it was actually a plant seed now, and it'll be ready for the craft fair. That's what it was. I knew that the, I was listening. <laughs> it's interesting. I, I, I didn't go this morning, but I, I was listening, watching online the uh, Anglican service from Ravenna. And uh, 
Stuart said something that I thought was very interesting, I've never heard before, uh, you will have, uh, and that is that a seed never sees its flower. A seed never sees its flower. Something about evangelism. You know, we sow seeds, we may never see the fruit of that seed. Okay, well, uh, the big announcement today is that the annual general meeting follows morning tea. So we'll be having morning tea in here. We'll grab uh, something quickly. And uh, there's agendas at the back. Um, I hope you've all read the, the reports. I, I think the reports are great. Well, I had a party playing one of them, and I one of them, so that's, that's something. But uh, I particularly like reading Pete's report on the activities, not only of what he's been doing, but what we've been doing as we've been developing the life and ministry uh, of our congregation here. It's a great summary of, of what we're doing, where we've been, and where we're going. So make sure you read that, but not during the sermon, of course. <laughs> and on Good Friday, Peter and Amanda won't be here next Sunday. They'll be uh, celebrating a wonderful event in the life of their family in Cross Harbour. And so we wish we're well on that. But uh, also, Good Friday it comes after next Sunday, and Pete and Amanda have invited us to their place following the service for Hot Cross Buns. So that's uh, very much appreciated. Thank you. Now, um, Peter, the other Peter, Peter Harriman, has something right here. Uh, he's going to make some important announcements. Thank you. Picture of a, <clears throat> this is a picture of a marquee and um, there's black material being put up on the walls and then there's lots of photos uh, and there's a carpet and there's a little table in the middle there. I like this picture. It, uh, it's a picture of what I'm anticipating for the Madhubar street party for us to go there um, with our marquee and have a welcoming place. Uh, and what I like most about this, it's sort of a, a inviting um, environment. And I think what we're trying to, uh, this is, I know it's got the mantra, but I did a little bit of fiddling in the, uh, the sign. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I, I did. Plus it's an AI generated picture, yeah, I did ask, I did ask AI to produce the picture. And that was the best one it could come up with. But I thought it was quite nice, just the feel of it. And uh, I think that that's our goal, is to, to create something that's beautiful and inviting, just to have people come in. And, it does, and I know that's covered in photos. I said, I said to AI, hey, can, can you put photos and inspirational messages, please? And it wouldn't do the messages. Um, maybe I've got to pay money for that. I don't know. <laughs> um, and it, when it did messages, they were just gobbledygook anyway. So. Um, but that's, we're having a meeting tomorrow. Actually, actually, we've had the meeting tomorrow for street party. 12.30 tomorrow uh, for all the keen people who uh, want to um, contribute to the planning. But I'm hoping lots of people will be contributing in the day. Thanks. Um, I'd just like to say that um, we, with Easter coming up in a couple of weeks, we now have the little flyers out. That if you'd like to take some and, and invite some people along on the Easter weekend, so they'll be up on the back table. There's also some posters, um, poster size versions of these if you'd like to put them around. Um, now, with um, Easter Sunday, we're going to have a, a pretty special service. It's going to be a cafe church. So, as usual, it would be lovely if we could have a lovely morning tea um, on that day. So, any of you who would like to contribute to that, that would be fantastic. Um, but the, the other thing that we're going to be doing is, um, we've actually done it before, we're going to be blossoming the cross. So, what that means is that we'll be asking people to bring along a flower or flowers, as many as you like, and we will be actually decorating the cross in fresh flowers as um, a symbol of the beauty and the new life of Christ that he brings on that day. So just keep that in mind if you're a gardener. 
um, just don't cut your flowers on Palm Sunday. Just wait until Easter Sunday and bring them along. Thanks. Just to add a little to what Pete was saying about the, um, our presence at the Madhurabar Street Party, we are in fact going to be uh, taking photos of our various groups and activities around the life of the church and its ministries to create that visual display so that people can see uh, who we are and, and what we're up to here at Madhurabar United Church. I joked with those on this side this morning, I've taken the names of those who usually sit in the front seat this morning. Um, there'll be due uh, follow-up there. And it reminded me of a story about the opening of a brand new church. And in the, uh, in the preceding months, people in the congregation were invited to make suggestions about what features they would like to have in this brand new church. And the minister also was given the opportunity to uh, put in his two bobs worth and put in a special request. Um, the, the cost finished up being astronomical because of all the special features that were included. But on the very first Sunday, when the church was open and the people gathered, they tended to sit three or four rows back from the front. And so the minister walked up to the pulpit, he pressed a button, all the front seats rolled forward and underneath the floor, and those at the back came to the front. He thought he was very smart, and uh, he'd accomplished what he'd sought to accomplish, but what he didn't realise that uh, as he was preaching, he got to the 15 minute mark, a trapdoor opened underneath him and he fell through and disappeared. So you be careful what you wish for. Well, we're going to sing the song that we practiced just before worship commenced this morning. And uh, while this song of worship is one that uh, we're gathering in and expressing our heartfelt love for the Lord in, we are also preparing for Good Friday. This is going to be one of the special songs that we sing together on Good Friday. But rather than singing it cold, we're having a bit of a warm-up so that we become more familiar with it. So, let us stand together as we're able. Let's worship the Lord. As we sing together, it was finished.
Christmas morning. Thanks. <coughs> among those who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip, in turn, told Jesus. Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, Unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Those who love their life will lose it, while those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honour the one who serves me. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to you. Jesus said, This voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. So I've entitled the message this morning, I Know Someone Who. And regardless of what topic we might be talking about, Often in the course of conversation, we may think to ourselves, oh yes, I know someone who, dot, 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 who did that, or who went there, or who heard that message, or was a leader in that field, or experimented with this, or that. I know someone who. Thanks, Peter. I know someone who is looking for Jesus. There were Greeks in the city of Jerusalem during the time of the Passover celebration. Who were these people? Some scholars think that they were Gentiles, Greeks who were in town and observing what was going on and they'd heard about Jesus and they wanted to know more about him. However, most scholars have concluded that in fact these Greeks were Jewish men, a part of the diaspora, the global spread of people from Israel to other nations, and they had returned to Jerusalem for the Passover. And yes, they had indeed heard of this Nazarene named Jesus. And so they asked Philip, can you introduce us to Jesus? We want to see him. We want to meet him for ourselves. I know someone who is looking for Jesus. And these were the people who were looking for him. Philip told Andrew, and Philip and Andrew told Jesus. They told Jesus. 
Jesus, there were Greek men who were looking for them. Now, curiously, that's all that we hear about the potential interaction between Jesus and these Greek people. We have no clue whatsoever as to whether they actually met Jesus or not. You see, John uses those who are inquirers to ask of him. And those who were messengers, the go-betweens, Philip and Andrew, they brought the message to Jesus that these people were looking for him. God requires go-betweens quite often. God plants us in a place amongst a certain group of people that we might be God's agents of peace, of reconciliation, of hope, ones who bear witness to the reality of Jesus in our own lives. God places us strategically, not accidentally. But in the Gospel of John, Philip and Andrew and the Greek-speaking people are simply props to set up the next part of the narrative in which Jesus begins to speak about his impending death. I know someone who listened to Jesus about speaking about his death. There were the disciples, there were a crowd that had gathered, and we have no knowledge of the extensiveness of this crowd and of the constituents who made it up, where they were from, why they were there. Were they followers of Jesus or were they simply curious? But Jesus took this opportunity to declare to them that this is what will happen. And he described it using the metaphor of a grain of wheat falling into the soil. And the grain gives up its existence, its identity as a grain of wheat, in order to become a living plant. One grain can do so much. Imagine the minute amount of flour that, be, that can be ground out of one kernel of wheat. However, should the grain die, or more accurately, give up its life, to the life within and allow the plant to grow, to germinate and to bear its heads of grain so much more to be harvested than one seed. This is the principle of the kingdom of God. God sows into our lives that we in turn may lay down our lives for the sake of others, that we may make sacrifices Give up our identity as a single grain of wheat in order that the good news of God's love may be shared with others. And at times we know that that costs us. It may cost us financially. It may cost us in time. It may cost us in energy. It may mean that we have to lay aside something that we really love to be doing right now in order to be there for the other. <coughs> to nurture this unique message in the life of another person. I know someone who is looking for Jesus. The Greeks were looking for him. I know someone who told Jesus that someone was looking for him. It was Philip and Andrew, his disciples, who faithfully shared that message with Jesus. I know someone who listened to Jesus speaking about his death, the crowd that was gathered there on that occasion. And we move to a different level, a different dimension of this story. That I know someone who loved me enough to introduce me to Jesus. And I want you just to pause for a moment and think, who were those people, influential in my life, who shared God's love with me? Perhaps we grew up in a Christian family. It was our parents, our extended family, who introduced us to Jesus who shared with us and nurtured us in God's love. Or perhaps we're in our school years and a friend spoke to us about their faith in Jesus. And we sought to know more and we asked and we inquired and we discovered for ourselves that God indeed does love each and every one of us. What was your journey to faith? Who were the people who were influenced? 
influential in not just speaking about the truths of God's word to you, but who embodied the presence of Christ for you. Who nurtured you in your relationship with Jesus? I know someone who valued me enough to encourage and mentor me in my Christian faith. That after coming to faith in Christ, we weren't just left alone, but God gathered around us those people who spoke words of encouragement, who spoke words of affirmation, who identified in us the gifts of the Spirit that were emerging and nurtured in us the fruit of the Spirit that was growing. Who were those people who mentored you in your faith, who nurtured you, who encouraged you, who helped you to grow into the person that you have become, or the disciple of Christ that you are continuing to become? Because we know that that journey, that growth, that dimension of us becoming the fullness of all that Christ has promised us doesn't finish before our mortal life ends. It is ongoing. It is continuous. The Spirit of Christ nurturing us, challenging us, inspiring us to be all that Christ is calling us to be. Often when I conduct funerals, people ask that I might share with them Psalm 23. And a part of what I often say in speaking about Psalm 23 is that as the shepherd took the sheep into the pastures, providing sufficient feed for them, it is like God, our shepherd, taking us into that place or gathering around us those people who are life-giving to us. The pastures, just as they nourish the sheep, are like the special people in our lives who nourish us, who nurture and encourage us. It might be the person responsible for your pastoral care. Again, it may well be your parents or your siblings or a special friend. Perhaps it was a Sunday school teacher or a youth leader who taught that role of feeding your soul in the name of Jesus Christ. But we are drawn beyond just being the recipients. We are drawn into this space of actually being people equipped by God to be that very same gift to others, to mentor and to nurture. I know someone respected me enough to seek my wisdom and my care. Who are those people whom God has brought into your sphere of influence? that you have the opportunity to speak life-giving words into their lives. Perhaps your children, your grandchildren, our extended family members, friends, neighbours, those within the life of our fellowship here. You might not even have explicitly thought of yourself as a mentor to others. That doesn't really matter. It's what the other person things that you are to them. Oh, I can never be mature enough in my faith to be a mentor or a coach for someone else in their Christian faith, or you would be surprised that in seeking to be a person who lives with integrity of saying what you mean and meaning what you say, and that you will talk matching your walk and your walk matching your talk, people notice People notice the congruence of our faith and actions. They're observing what we're doing. They're listening to the words that we're saying. And we may never know the influence that we have positively upon the lives of others because of the way in which we live out our Christian faith. But be assured that for each and every one of us in this space today, there are those who are looking to us following what we do, 
Oh yes, there are those who like to watch what we do just to catch us up and to point out that how hypocritical we might be. Well, allow those voices to be silenced and raise the volume of the voices who are saying in the background that you may never know. I so appreciate who you are. I appreciate your gentleness. I appreciate your strength. I appreciate your integrity. I appreciate your faithful witness to Jesus. I appreciate your giftedness and how you serve and lead. I appreciate who you are. As someone who seeks to live faithfully to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And while none of us claim to be a perfect example, we are all examples to each other. And this is a community of mutual encouragement and inspiration. How blessed we are to belong, to have this place of belonging, to have this group of people to whom we belong. And those who have passed on from this life, we remember the positive influence that they have had upon us, our mothers and fathers in the faith. We remember them today. And we are reminded that just as they have gone before us and modeled for us what it means to be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ, that that responsibility rests upon each of our shoulders too. That we would bear witness to one another of God's incredible faithfulness and God's amazing love. And that wherever we are, in the context of our street or local community, in the context of our immediate or extended family, that we would always seek to be the person that Jesus Christ has called us to be. I know someone who lives their life in faith and humility, in courage, in strength, in grace, in peace, in hope. And I'm looking at you right now. In the name of Christ. Amen. There was a move towards the latter part of the 20th century somewhat against the nature of the language that we were sharing in worship about our familiarity with Jesus. As some scholars, some theologians felt that we had lost that sense of reverence for the Lord. When we spoke about Jesus as our buddy, our friend, our mate, and I know particularly in the Australian context, having shared in ministry in pubs with blokes, and we talk about Jesus being our mate. It brings a level of familiarity that something means that we miss the divine. It's an incredibly significant thing to hold in balance. This nature of God being above and beyond us. But Jesus, having walked, walked amongst us historically 2,000 years ago, God taking on the form of being human. And God does invite us to recognise Jesus not only as our Lord and our Saviour, but our friend. One upon whom we can just cast ourselves into his loving arms to recognise his presence with us to bring our prayers, our burdens and concerns. And this is an oldie but a goodie, and I know that you'll know it. What a friend we have in Jesus. And that we would recognise, yes, Christ is our advocate. In the very throne room of God, <coughs> interceding for us. But the Spirit of Christ is moving amongst us, assuring us that Jesus is not only our Saviour and Lord, but our brother. And friend, please stand as you are able to sing together. As we do this, we're going to give up our tithes and our offerings, and so I invite those who are serving us this morning that way, please, to wait upon us for our gifts as we sing.
sustain the gifts that we bring and those who have transferred by direct debit. Lord, receive and bless our offerings and our tithes. And not only the gifts, but each of us as givers, Lord. For again, we offer ourselves to you as living sacrifices, holy and dedicated to your service. Lord, for this is the true worship that you desire. May we live more completely for you day by day. In the name of Christ. Please be seated. <coughs> and just as we sang of bringing our burdens before God and recognising what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear, let us come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Loving Lord God, our hearts are heavy this day. With the war, the conflicts, the devastation and the needless deaths of so many people. God, as we cast our eyes around the world, we recognise the destruction that is taking place in Gaza. We pray for the Palestinian people, Lord, that there will be a sufficiency in the provision of food, clean drinking water and medicine that's required. Shelters, Lord, safe places for people to seek haven. And God, we pray for an end to this conflict. Lord, for the madness, the destruction of innocent human life as revenge and reciprocation for the insurgents, of those who brought destruction upon innocent lives back in October. God, we pray for peace. Peace in Israel and the Palestinian territories. We pray for peace in Ukraine. God, we pray for an end to the conflict that is continuing to unfold there through the lens through which we look, God, we do not understand any dimension of appropriateness or rightness about the invasion that has taken place. God, we pray for restoration of the Ukrainian wars. We pray for the end of conflict and loss of human life. We pray for the nation of Haiti the ongoing conflict amongst the warring gangs, the discord and the confusion that has been caused by the resignation of the government leader. God, we pray for wisdom that you would raise up leaders who would bring peace, would bring restoration and hope to the communities of Haiti. God, we pray for those who are suffering the consequences of natural disasters, of landslides and floods, storms, those who are experiencing famine because of drought, lack of food. God, we pray for your provision, that through those of us who have more than enough, that you would move us by compassion, to ensure that those who don't have enough food would have enough each day. We pray, Lord God, for our leaders elected at go go local government level yesterday. For Tom Tate, for Glenn Toza, for other members of the Gold Coast City Council, for whom their future may yet be uncertain, but for those who you know have been elected, God, we do pray for your leading of our city council. We pray, Lord, for godly wisdom, for compassion. We pray, God, for ongoing sustainable development. Lord, we pray for hope in our communities. Continue to pray, Lord God, against the violence 
that people are experiencing in their homes. God, we pray for peace and for healing. We pray for those who perpetrate violence, emotional manipulation. We pray for those who suffer. God, we pray for your church in all its forms, colours and textures around the world, in its variety of expressions of love and adoration for you. God, we pray that your church would thrive. We pray for the Christian churches across the Gold Coast, Lord, that in partnership together you would enable us to continue to proclaim the good news of your love for this city. And we pray for our sisters and brothers at the Warongari Mosque, which was opened just a couple of weeks ago. Lord, we thank you for our brothers and sisters in faith. Pray that they will know your blessing. We pray for the, the potential of partnership and friendship that may be established with God, we pray for our families. We pray for those who we know who have been sick, who continue to, to struggle with illness and disability, those who are preparing for surgery, those who are recovering from surgery, and those who are facing death. God, we pray that your peaceful presence would be known and that your healing hand would be upon each other. God, we thank you your loving presence in our midst and we commit into your hands the meeting of our congregation in just a little while that you would lead us and guide us by your Holy Spirit to you be the glory in the name of Jesus Christ our wonderful Lord and amazing Savior Amen We remain seated as we watch a video of a song that we're going that we're introducing this morning for singing on Easter Sunday. So again, this is a getting us ready for our Sunday celebration. Please feel free to sing along as you become familiar with the tune. Uh, and I ask that you would experience this uh, this ministry through the video and uh, recognise the significance of these words that are sung. Thanks, Graham and Ben.
wonderful words of assurance they are from the Apostle Paul as he wrote to the Roman Church. Please stand and receive the blessing. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be yours this day and forevermore. Amen.